Okay, welcome to Black Swan Outdoors, and today we're going to do another navigation video. I may have repeat some of this information from the navigation series, uh, but if you're interested in choosing a compass and getting some more information on uh, land navigation, check out that series. It is a little boring, but you might find it interesting if you're uh, interested in the topic. So today what we're going to talk about is the difference between short term or short distance versus a long distance compass. And what do I mean by this? I mean, if you if you're going out for a hike, you're the occasional hiker, you don't go out very far, maybe you stay on the trail quite a bit. Um, you probably don't have a whole lot of use for a compass. And this is quite often with a lot of outdoors people, uh, they don't have any navigation skill because they don't actually put themselves into a position where they feel like they need to have a compass. And, and I would say that what you should start doing is bringing a compass with you and getting familiar with the compass and start using it, particularly on short distance hikes. Um, and so some really good short distance compass would be something like a small kind of basic base plate compass. Uh, this base plate compass is lightweight. It's not very bulky. Um, and it's going to do most people very well for a lot of conditions. Um, another style you could go with too would be something like a wrist compass or a clip-on compass or pin-on compass. And what that's going to do is essentially give you your cardinal directions, north, south, east, west. So if you're going into a piece of property that you're very familiar with and you just need to know, hey, I'm going west to my deer stand or, you know, wherever, uh, that you know kind of those cardinal directions and you know kind of how to get back. If you're not going over a lot of distance, you're not going to lose a whole lot of energy and time retracing steps or, or meandering. But if you're going over long periods of distance, you want to really be as accurate as possible. And that accuracy is increased um, quite a bit by either the mirror or the, um, or the lensetic sighting functions. And where these really shine is over open territory. So if you're hiking a lot in the mountains, going across large swaths of open land, uh, where you're taking long azimuths, it makes a lot of sense. I see a lot of people trying to go in, getting into either backpacking or hiking um, or for their bug out bags or whatever, uh, and then they go right for the most expensive compasses. And oftentimes, if you have a military experience, a lot of times people go for this you know, lensetic or marching compass, um, and then others try to go for the most expensive bait place compass that they can get, uh, like the Suntus. And Really, it doesn't serve them that much more of an advantage uh, getting the more expensive compasses, particularly if you're not going for long distance. Now, can you go for a long distance with a height with a compass like this? Absolutely. Um, I've done many trips with stuff like this. I've done 110 uh, mile backpacking trips with a compass no different than this. Um, my personal preference um, is I do like to have a luminescent bezel. Uh, so this compass has a tritium in it, so it's always going to glow. This compass uh, requires light, but it becomes luminescent. And the reason why you need that is because oftentimes... The reason why you need that glowing feature is that oftentimes if you need to hike, um, find your way by dead reckoning, uh, maybe there's a big um, snowstorm, um, rain shower, fog, night that you have to move through from an emergency perspective, um, then you're really going to need to have that ability to, to reference your compass and have it to glow. That's absolutely essential in those, in that, particularly in an emergency scenario. Um, a compass like this that has a black base and white writing uh, is very easy to see in daylight and quick reference. And that's really what the main function of this compass is, at least for myself. This is the compass that I carry with me on most of my short hikes when I don't want something big and bulky. Um, I almost never carry a compass like this. It's a great compass, it's very accurate, but it doesn't serve me a whole lot of good, uh, particularly because it requires that I carry um, a grid overlay, um, which I don't want to have to do. I don't want to carry another piece of equipment. So, um, you know, 
bulky, heavy. Um, you know, it's a fun compass. I, I use it, but it's just really not that that great. You'll see a lot of people recommend these compasses, and again, you're going to have to care of a Grivole. People will talk about Ranger beads, which are almost non-essential on a trail, and unless you're dead reckoning, which no, most people never do. Um, it's just not practical. Um, you know, a compass like this is a small base plate compass. The mirror might not be good for navigation uh, or useful for most people's navigation, especially if you're in a wooded area or for short distances, but for signaling, perhaps, checking for ticks, hygiene purposes, things like that, that, that can be helpful to have a mirror on the trail. Um, so I can see that. The other advantage to the mirror is, and I think I might have talked about this before, is that you can extend the base plate. So the base plate itself is much longer, which means you can shoot, you can draw um, a, uh, a, a bearing on your map that's going to be much, much longer, uh, a little bit longer than what you're going to be able to do with this compass. Um, so it really, it, you know, there's pros and cons. Uh, but having a backup compass, if you're going to have a long distance compass like this, I would consider this for a long distance trip and then use this as a backup. Or I might go with a wrist style compass as my short distance and or backup compass. So this would just be a reference. And so it, it, it kind of comes to personal preference. This is a homemade compass of an old old uh, compass design or an old compass design that's obsolete uh, that I cut down and put in a little cap and then just put some Velcro on here to wear on my wrist. Um, I really like the Sun 2 Clipper as well, but it doesn't fit on the uh, stainless steel bracelet of my watch. So I just put it on a one inch Velcro as well so I can wear this on my other wrist. But it's super nice just to have quick cardinal directions references. Am I going to use this for navigation? No. Uh, not any real navigation. Um, is it a good backup compass? Not really, but it can be serviceable. We can make it work. Um, you know, it it's just not accurate over long distances, particularly um, with the increments here. Uh, you really need that two degree increments to make to make it work. If you see, the, you know, the 10 or 5 degree increments, those are for beginners. That's a beginner's compass and it has no place on a trail. That's just for pr really for practice um, and it makes it easier for kids to see uh, the numbers. So, um, yeah, this was just a, a real quick short distance versus long distance compass choice options. Things to talk about or, or consider, put it in the comments down below. Remember to like and subscribe if you like this kind of uh, stuff. Let me know. I'll do more outdoorsy type stuff um, if, if people are interested and um, happy to do more navigation videos specifically.